Hi guys, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. If you've made it this far, you found yourself right in class number two. Now in class number one, we learned all about our own machine. We even had some homework. So I hope you guys did your homework. If you did, you'll know all about your machine. So in today's class, we are going to learn how to wind a bobbin, how to thread our machine, but first we're gonna learn a little bit about basic thread and basic needles. Let's get right into it. So here we have 100% cotton thread and we use 100% cotton thread on woven non-stretch material. Here is a quick test to prove whether or not you have 100% cotton thread. You see me taking my nail and scraping it across the thread. Watch and see what 100% cotton thread does. It kinks right up like little curly cues. A lot of quilters typically do use cotton thread within their quilts. Unless you're going to be doing some quilting, I wouldn't recommend that for right now. Okay, now this is going to be your go-to thread pretty much all the time, and it's a polyester thread. You can use this on woven and stretchy fabrics, and it's actually stronger than cotton. Watch and see with the nail test how this thread reacts. Well, it does not react at all, does it? Here I'm going to just test both the Coates and Clark and the Guterman polyester thread with our nail test. And they both pretty much do the same thing, just what I thought. Now both of these brands you can find at the store. They're pretty readily available. Walmart actually carries a lot of the Coates and Clark. I believe Joanne Fabrics carries both brands. Now there are other threads, but these are the basics. Now these two needle selections will get you started, no doubt. The first one we're gonna talk about is called Universal. Now this is more of a general purpose needle and you'll probably use this one most of the time. And you'll use it on woven fabrics um, things that are non-stretchy, and also on some heavier stretchy fabric. Now, when comparing this number to the other needle that we're going to look at in a minute, this number is definitely higher. Now, a higher number means thicker, stronger fabric, and that's how you'll remember that. Now, this is one of my favorite needles, actually, and it is a jersey needle. Now, if you are working on any stretchy fabric at all, uh, you will definitely want to use a jersey needle. Now, compared to the universal needle, these numbers are definitely smaller. So, a smaller needle number means a finer fabric. There are many brands of needles, but this is the most popular. It is called Schmetz. And both are actually available at Joann Fabrics and Walmart, and of course online. These needles I actually purchased on eBay for a super good price. I wanted to show you these needles because I wanted you to note the difference in the number on the package, even though it's a little different. Now it is a higher number. We learned already that a higher number is for heavier, thicker fabric. This is my sewing machine. It is a Brother SQ9185. Be sure to check your manual just in case yours is a little different. Take a close look at your needle. One side is flat and the other side has a rounded feel to it. The flat side goes toward the back and the rounded side goes toward you. Be sure to insert the needle all the way in. You can actually see the top of the needle there and that will ensure that it is up there all the way. And then you're going to hand turn it at first and then grab your screwdriver 
or whatever tool came with your sewing machine. Okay, so I hope you have flexible toes. Go ahead and sit on the floor. Okay, I'm just kidding. I thought it was funny though. <laughs> this is your basic plastic bobbin. And we'll pop it right here. Now this white plastic uh, lever type arm that is where our spool of thread is going to go, and that's where we're going to get the thread to wind our bobbin. Now it's very important which way your thread comes off of your spool of thread. Now rule of thumb is it's going to come from underneath. So you'll see me place the spool of thread right there, and you see the thread is coming under. That's how you want to place yours as well. But if your sewing machine looks different than mine, then you'll need to check your owner's manual. Believe it or not, it matters which disc you put on the end of your spool of thread. Let's try the small one. The reason this one does not work is you'll see me pull the thread out and I'll turn to the side here and it's actually touching the spool of thread and it catches, so that's no good. Let's try the medium size one next. The reason why this one is not going to work, you'll see here when I pull the thread, it actually is just under the edge still of our spool of thread and that's not gonna work because it's still gonna catch. Okay, let's try the last one. The reason why this one will work, I'll show you. When I start to pull the thread, it comes over top of the spool of thread's edge, and it's nice and smooth, and it doesn't catch on anything. Now let's continue on and wind our bobbin. Now here on my machine, it actually gives a picture of instructions right on the machine. How handy and helpful is that? Now that your spool of thread is securely locked in, you're going to pull the thread over and follow the instructions and first put it through that metal looping. Here I'm just showing you how it locks into that little loop. Now it says to take the thread from the loop area and come over into this area that has this little arm on it. This next part where you're going to put the thread over that arm, it is actually like flossing your teeth. It's like sticking floss right in between two tight teeth. Here is a nice close-up picture of what I'm talking about. It just slides right in. Now, if we were threading our machine, we would continue on, but we're not, remember, we're winding our bobbin. So we are going to take it from the arm and go over to the next instruction. So the dotted line is our bobbin winder. And that straight arrow line coming down is if you were going to thread the machine normally. Now the key here is to get your thread around that tall little piece in the right manner. Watch me as I do it for you. Firmly with your left index finger, you're going to hold that thread down. With your right hand, you're gonna pull that thread around behind that tall part and then right in front of that tall part and come around that round part. Pull it and then pull it taut nicely and lift your finger up and there you have it. Manually take your thread and wind it around the plastic bobbin a few times.
Now, there's a little knife on the bottom of that bobbin winder, and watch this. It's gonna cut right off. Now you're going to pop the bobbin winder to the right, right in place. Turn your machine on and put your machine on fast and press the pedal and go. Now it will stop on its own when it's all filled up, so you won't even have to worry about it. Push the bobbin casing over to the left and just pull up the, the bobbin. Cut the bobbin thread with the machine cutter on the side. Here is where the bobbin area is on my machine. Yours may be different, so check your manual. There's probably a little lever like mine, as you see me do there, and the little door just pops up. Pay close attention to the diagram where the bobbin area is. It's gonna show us which way our thread is going to go. On my machine, it's going to go counterclockwise. Set the bobbin in, pull that thread out, as you see me do with my left hand, I'm still holding on to it, and now I'm just going to follow in the groove. Just keep going and as you see me there, there's a little knife at the very end and you're just gonna follow it right out and it cuts your thread for you. This next step may seem like a maze, but it's really not, just follow the numbers. With the presser foot in the down position, we are going to thread our machine just like we started to in the beginning for our bobbin but we're going to go all the way through this time take it through that metal piece and then through those two tight thin metal pieces right there pull your thread down and just follow the arrows and the directions back up and then there's a metal loop in there. I hope you can see that. You just go over that and it'll catch it because it's supposed to. Pull down, put your thread in that little lever there. I'll use my automatic threader here and then I'll thread it by hand in a second and show you both ways. This is just how mine works. Okay, let's thread by hand. You're still going to put it in that little lever right there, and then you are going to thread the needle, just like that. Pull it through and pull it out. This is the main presser foot for my machine, and I'm going to show you how to put it on. You're going to lift that lever up so your presser foot comes up. There's a little bar on the foot I'm just going to put it down and it just connects. This is how I let it loose. There's a button on the back. I press it and it falls out. Slide your thread back through your presser foot just like that. Now turn the wheel. It should be on the right hand side of your machine. Turn it towards you always so that the needle goes down. And what it's doing is it's going to lift the bobbin thread up. Lift up your presser foot and grab that bobbin thread out of there and pull it out. And you, my friend, are ready to sew. Now I know that was a lot of information. Now in the next class, get ready because we are going to learn about a couple different fabrics and we're going to sew. We'll see you in the next lesson.